We know salt marshes are important nursery areas for juvenile fish and shellfish. They help soak up excess water when it rains heavily and are great at cleaning the water as it flows through the marsh. Here we are on a beautiful fall day along the shores of the Great Bay Estuary and we're going to talk about the importance of salt marshes. Today we know that salt marsh habitat is a super important place for lots of animals but we also know that it was important for colonists. People that lived along the edge of Great Bay in farms utilized the salt marsh for various things. There were two different kinds of salt marsh grasses that they used mostly. Salt marsh farmers that lived along Great Bay would have harvested both of these kinds of hay. One, the cord grass for things like mats and bedding for horses. And the salt marsh hay was actually more used for uh, feeding the horses and cows that they had. I have a story today that I'm gonna tell you and it's called Tom Wiggins Salt Marsh Farm Boy. Way back when, about 150 years ago, a boy named Tom Wiggins lived on a farm here at Sandy Point with his mother and father and four brothers and sisters. Tom's father was a salt marsh hay farmer. Tom helped his father cut salt marsh grass to feed the horses and cows on the farm. Tom would sit up on the big hay cutter with his father as their two horses, Molly and Dolly, pulled it over the salt marsh, cutting row upon row of salt marsh hay. In some parts of the marsh where horses could not go, the hay had to be cut by hand. Tom's father would use a tool called a scythe. He would swing the blade back and forth all day long. Salt marsh farming was hard work. After Tom and his father cut the grass, they would rake it up and pile it in huge mounds right on the salt marsh. And then they would take these hay poles, once they had it in mounds, the dried hay, pile it on these two hay poles, Sometimes these staddles were 10 feet high. They had to put the hay on a big circle of wooden legs so that it wouldn't get wet when the tide came in. These haystacks on wooden legs were called staddles. And you can see that we have one of what's called a staddle post. So the circle of these legs that the hay was on would have been up on a whole bunch of these staddle posts. And there are some marshes in New Hampshire and Massachusetts where you can still find some of these staddle posts pounded into the marsh, left over from times long ago. In the winter time, when the marsh was frozen over, Tom and his father would go out to the staddles in big sleds pulled by Molly and Dolly. They would fill up the sleds with hay and drag it back home to the farm to store in the barn. Now, it was rough for the horses out there on the marsh. Molly and Dolly had to wear special shoes called bog shoes to keep their hooks from sinking down into the marsh mud. You can see the shape of the horse's hook that would fit right into there and the hook would sit on that metal piece and then there would be pieces of leather and a strap that would go around what would be the horse's ankle. And they wore one of these on each hook. They had to practice for many weeks walking around the barn while wearing their bog shoes. Salt marsh farming could be dangerous. Sometimes sleds tipped, hay was lost, and horses were hurt. Let me tell you about one particular day where Tom and his father found themselves in big trouble. One cold winter day, Tom and his father went out onto the marsh with Molly and Dolly pulling the sled. They rode right up to one of their staddles. Tom climbed up 
brushed the bit of snow off of the top of the hay and helped his father fork it into the sled. While Tom was up on top of the haystack, he noticed that Molly and Dolly were acting kind of strange. They kept looking around, stamping their feet, and sniffing the air. Tom figured that Molly and Dolly knew bad weather was coming. Just then, the wind started to blow, the grass on the marsh started to sway, and the water in the Great Bay started to rise. Pretty soon, waves began crashing over the marsh. Tom knew that he and his father had to hurry up and pitch the rest of the hay into the sled so they could ride home and feed the horses and cows before the storm hit. It wasn't long before Tom noticed that Molly and Dolly were almost knee deep in water and it was icy and the sled was sinking. Because the water was already too deep for a person to walk through, Tom and his father had no choice but to send the horses home alone with the sled. So there they were, Tom and his father, on top of the haystack, with the tide coming up and the storm getting fiercer. With the wind whipping the hay across their faces, they fought to dig a hole in the top of the haystack. They quickly climbed in and pulled the hay over them as best they could. The next few hours were wild with the sounds of waves crashing underneath them. But eventually the tide went out and the storm passed. The next morning, Tom awoke all snug and warm inside the haystack. Tom and his father thanked their lucky stars for haystacks and made their way home. When they went into the barn, the sled was still full of hay and Molly and Dolly were safe in their stalls. In the kitchen of their farmhouse, Tom's mom greeted them with great relief and fed them a breakfast of hot buttered corn cakes and glasses of switchel to wash them down. The end. Let me show you what Tom's mom would have put the switchel in. Now switchel was kind of like the Gatorade of the past and they would have put a jug like this into a cold little creek in Great Bay with a rope hanging off of it and when they were thirsty out there on the hot marsh they would pull it up and have a glass of this switchel. Now you can still buy switchel today if you go to, this came from Califf's Country Store in Barrington. So little country stores still sell Switchel. And if you want to learn a little bit more about Switchel and find out how to make it yourself and try it, you can watch another one of our short videos on how to make Switchel.